There are many applications of integrals and one that we just have seen is how to calculate arc length for a curve. Just to illustrate applications a little more, we're going to talk about work, work in the sense of physics. So let's say we want to move a body along a straight line by a distance d by applying a constant force on this body. And the question is how much work is needed to do that. Of course we need to define what work means in this case. And here the work done by moving a body a distance d along a straight line applying a constant force of magnitude f in the direction of motion. By definition it's just the magnitude of the force F multiplied by the distance D. Well the force here is something that is measured typically in Newton in the international system or in pound in the American system. The distance is uh, measured in meters in the international system or in feet in the American system. And therefore work is homogeneous to Newton meters, which itself is homogeneous to joules. And the symbol, symbol for that will be a capital J. And if we measure um, the force in pound and distance in feet, of course we get pound feet. Remember that this is in the case where the force is constant. And in particular, that means essentially constant acceleration. So, to look at an example, let's see what's the work done if you check up the side of a 1000 kg car by 40 cm to change a tire. And we're going to take 9.8 m per second squared for the acceleration from gravity. We will take the same value for other exercises later in this video. So, the force that we must apply must compensate the weight and uh, a magnitude of the weight is just the mass multiplied by acceleration of gravity. Here we have 1000 kg that we multiply by 9.8 for the acceleration of gravity and we get 9800 Newton for the magnitude of the force necessary. Then we apply this constant force to move the car by 40 centimeters, in other words by 0.4 meter. And therefore the work is simply the magnitude of the force in Newton multiplied by the distance in meters and we obtain 9800 times 0 0.4, 3920 joules. Now what if the force is not constant? We, we're going to keep the situation where we move something along a straight line, let's say from x equal a, we move it along to x equal b but now, at a given position x, the magnitude of the force is some function f of x. In other words, the magnitude of the force is not the same at each point. Right, and we move it from a all the way to b. So to try to understand what happens when the magnitude of the force is no longer constant, we're going to look at our interval a, b, and look at a partition of it in subintervals, let's say in this case n subintervals. So I have x0 to x1, x1 to x2, x2 to x3, and so on. And then a typical interval from xk minus 1 to xk, the kth interval, we can look at the work needed to move our object along that interval. And to go from xk minus 1 to xk, assuming that this interval is small, and if this interval is small and the force changes in a continuous way, then the magnitude of the force shouldn't change a lot because uh, it depends on x in a continuous manner and x doesn't change a lot. And therefore, when we move um, our body from xk minus 1 to xk, it goes through a certain value here that we're going to pick randomly in the interval. Let's say, let's call that xk star. And for that partic particular value of x, the force function takes a certain value f of xk star. And 
if the interval is small and we assume small variation in the force over that interval, then we can assume that the work is pretty much the same as the work of the constant force f of xk star over the interval from xk minus 1 to xk. And in that case, we approximate the work needed to go from xk minus 1 to xk. We approximate it by this constant value, the value of the function at xk star, multiply by the width of the interval that we denote by delta xk. It's simply xk minus xk minus 1. Now if we do that not only on the kth subinterval but on each one of these subintervals, we pick a certain point, we assume that uh, we approximate the work by the work that the constant force at that particular sample point uh, would have to move the body over that interval. Then the work to go from A to B would be the sum of these works needed to go over each subinterval, and therefore we would obtain as an approximation of the work the sum from 1 to n of these values f of xk star multiplied by delta xk where k ranges from 1 to n and xk star is a sample point in the kth subinterval. Now here you should recognize that what we have is a Riemann sum for the function capital F on the interval AB for the subdivision the partition, sorry, uh, that we have picked, that is a pointed partition. So we have an approximation of the work by a Riemann sum, and this approximation gets better as the parameter of the partition gets smaller, in other words, the maximal width of the subintervals, and we make less and less error as the width of the subintervals gets small, and therefore passing to the limit. As we know, when we take the limit of a formula that depends on partitions of an interval for Riemann sums, and we take this limit as a parameter, in other words, the maximal width of the subintervals, parameter of the partition goes to zero, we obtain the integral of the function over the interval. In other words, the work required to move our body from x equal a to x equal b by applying the variable force f of x is integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now let's take a look at an example where we need to use this integral formula. A 2 kilogram bucket is lifted from the ground into the air by pulling in 6 meters of rope at a constant speed. And the rope weighs 250 grams per meter and we want to know how much work is spent lifting the bucket on the rope. So we have a situation like that and um, we want to look at uh, what happens when we pull the bucket up, pulling the rope through the pulley. So to locate the position we're going to say that uh, we're at level x equals 0 when the bucket is, is uh, on the ground and x equals 6 when it is all the way up and uh, you see that we have on the picture for an x between 0 and 6. So the force applied when the bucket is x meters from the ground is supposed to compensate the combined weight of the bucket and the rope. So we have to calculate how much weight of rope we have in that position and the weight of the bucket on the other end is fixed. So the length of rope here is 6 minus x, right, because the total height is 6 and uh, we've lifted the bucket x meters above the ground. So the length of rope is 6 minus x and um, the rope weighs 250 grams per meter. So if we have 6 minus x meters of rope, its weight is 250 grams, which is uh, 0.25 kilograms multiplied by the length of the rope 6 minus x multiplied by 9.8 which is acceleration of gravity right 0.25 times 6 minus x is going to be the mass in kilograms and we multiply that by acceleration of gravity to get the weight in Newton 
the total force, therefore, is 9.8 multiplied by this mass of rope plus the mass of the bucket, which is 2 kg. And now, according to the integral formula we just have established, the work required to lift the bucket and the rope is the integral from 0 to 6 of this variable force, f of x. The 9.8 is a multiplicative constant. I can pull it out of the integral. And therefore, it's 9.8 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 6 of 1.5, which is 0.25 times 6, minus 0.25x plus 2, and 2 plus 1.5 is 3.5, in other words, 7 half. So when I integrate, I get 7 half x minus the entire derivative of 1 fourth of x, which is x squared over 8. We evaluate that between 0 and 6, and multiplying by this 9.8, we obtain 161.7 joules.